You don't actually have to pay way over £20,000 for a compact executive estate car with a prestigious badge. Before you do, it's worth taking a drive in a Volvo V50, a car that sits somewhere between a Volkswagen Golf Estate and something like a BMW 3 Series Touring in terms of both image, size, cost and public perception. If you're looking for a compact estate but want something a bit nicer, or want a car like this, like the idea of something German but don't want to pay the premium, the V50 could be what you're looking for. Volvo have something of an estate car heritage, but in selling very large estates rather than compact models like this one. Now, the V50 is based on the Mark's S40 saloon, and like that car, sits in a kind of hinterland between the, the mainstream brands and the more prestigious Mark's. As with the S40, under the skin you'll find the running gear of Ford Focus, and that's no bad thing, as any enthusiastic Focus uh, driver will tell you. To keep things current, Volvo have in recent times given the whole thing a, a nip and tuck with revisions to the styling both inside and out. Volvo's access to the vast Ford parts bin means that there's a wide range of engines from which V50 buyers can choose. At the foot of the range there are 1.6 litre petrol and diesel variants before you get to 125 brake horsepower 1.8 and 145 brake horsepower 2 litre petrol unit. These sit in the range hierarchy just beneath the 136 brake horsepower 2 litre diesel that many buyers choose. Now, move a bit further up the lineup, and you've got a 2.4 litre 5 cylinder unit, petrol powered with 170 brake horsepower, or the D5, the diesel, also with 5 cylinders, now with 180 brake horsepower, and the option of a slick 6 speed manual gearbox these days. At the top of the range, you've got another five, this time the Petrol T5, the performance model, which is up 10 brake horsepower to 230 bhp. Now we reckon the best engine is the 2 litre 136 bhp diesel. It's got loads of performance, as much pulling power in fact as the range topping performance T5 model, yet it can average over 50 miles to the gallon on a regular basis. It's very refined too, whisper quiet at cruising speeds. Yes, it does get a little bit gruff when under heavy acceleration or pulling up steep hills, but no more than uh, you'd expect for a turbo diesel of this size. This is one fine engine. If you're comparing this car to a BMW or an Audi, then you shouldn't be disappointed. The cabin has a real quality feel to it in terms of both materials and construction. And it's also pretty comfortable for four adults at least. What you won't get, of course, are big Volvo levels of space in the back. But still, the rear seat cushions fold up and fold forward so that the rear seat backs fold completely flat, giving you this totally flat load area, which would be even better if the suspension turrets didn't intrude into it slightly. Still, the seat backs form this useful bulkhead between the load area and the front seats. Styling nips and tweaks on the version I'm looking at here include a reprofiled version of Volvo's familiar egg crate front grille with its chrome ring, clear lens headlamps, LED tail lamps and a slightly wider air intake at the front to give the car some more presence. The interior features revised controls here while the centre storage area features a revised handbrake and a reprofiled armrest for better driver comfort. In comparison to cars like Audi's A4 Avant and BMW's 3 Series Touring, models that don't offer that much more in terms of space or that much more of a prestigious badge, yet cost from around £22,000, this V50 looks pretty good value, costing from around £16,000. True. There are models that ride on the same platform, like Ford's Focus and Mazda 3, that cost significantly less. But this Volvo feels a very different car. The Swedes have worked hard to give it its own identity, and by and large, they've succeeded. You can get some real high-end options available on this model. And the, there's a real lot of thought that's gone into the detail. You can even control the electric side windows and the electric sunroof through just pressing a button on the key fob. 
The biggest seller in the V50 range has traditionally been the 2 litre 136 brake horsepower diesel, and with good reason. Once you've swallowed the initial upfront asking price, it's reassuringly inexpensive to run. A combined fuel economy figure of around 50.4 miles to the gallon suggests a lawnmower. The appeal of this V50 is the way that it combines a refreshingly brisk turn of pace with outstanding economy, without feeling insubstantial in any way. Quality oozes from every pore. Now true, if lighter weight componentry had been used, Ford might have shaved a few miles per gallon off the fuel economy figures or improved upon the already excellent 148 grams per kilometre of CO2 emissions. But Volvo is part of Ford's premier automotive group and its products need to look and feel the part. Volvo has bullishly stuck with the semi-premium small estate niche and ground out a decent market for itself with this V50. Today's version looks a bit prettier than before, price levels have been maintained giving the customer a better deal and it's still great quality inside. Some of the engines are better than others with the diesels and the 2 litre petrol being the range picks. Overall, we'll expect to see the V50 do pretty well for some time yet.